Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum, respected audience. Today, my topic of discussion is about corneal ulcers, uh, their different causes, and uh, possible management in case of the corneal perforation. These are the corneal photographs of a patient. Here you can see that uh, there is a corneal abscess and uh, eye is congested, red, inflamed. Along with that there is hypopion which is almost uh, four, 5 mm, 4 mm in height going up to the mid level and there is central corneal abscess and uh, along with central corneal abscess in the center area in the visual axis we can say there is corneal thinning which is uh, so thin that it can uh, perforate any time. So this is a case and the other photograph you can see inferiorly how much there is seal recongestion. Whenever such type of infection is going on the eye is obviously inflamed red and it is full of pus, hypopion. Yes. There are some other views here you can see that uh, superiorly and uh, nasally also there is deep seal recongestion, eye is inflamed and uh, you can see how much extensive this is infection over there. These types of infection uh, we can call it according to the modified Jones classification stage 3 classification grade we call it when it is extensive and any time we can say that sclera can be involved if not properly treated. Different views, temporal site so basically all 360 degree inflamed blood vessels are engorged and inflammation is going on in the eye and eye is full of pus and central there is corneal thinning which can lead to perforation. These are two other slides, photographs here you can see one is the direct illumination and other in it the photographer has made a slit to show the situation over there. These types of infection can happen after trauma, any insult to the eye, it can happen with the contact lens uses, if they are not properly used, if the hygiene is not taken good care of and uh, any abrasion over there, once the corneal epithelial integrity is compromised and the eye is not properly managed in time then these types of situations can happen when the infection keeps on aggravating and encroaching. And here you can see almost whole of the cornea. I can see 75 to 80 percent of the cornea is now involved. Just uh, superiorly on one side you can see a normal rim. Otherwise uh, full of pus and central corneal thinning and abscess. Everything is over there. So, multiple causes you can see of such types of infection. As I mentioned, trauma, contact lens use, any uh, insult to the eye. And sometimes uh, there are some bacteria which can even penetrate the intact corneal epithelium also. So, this is a very serious case. These are some other photographs. Here you can see a well round central corneal abscess like a shape of a donut it has taken a shape of a donut and occupying the maybe I can say 75 percent of the cornea and if the patient is looking down you can see that superior cornea is superior conjunctiva seal congestion is over there there are some other views of the same central like a donut shaped ring shaped corneal abscess and hypopion the anterior chamber is loaded with pus basically these patients come to this stage when they are not properly managed in time and things keep on deteriorating as i mentioned if we have to classify this type there are usually three grades we can say mild moderate and severe so if we fit the criteria of modified Jones severity grading, you can see the size 
is more than 5 mm of course depth so much that the cornea is just going to perforate centrally and deep stromal infiltrates what to think about it is a full fledged corneal abscess and uh, sclera is just going to be involved over there you can say that is in fact involved as the ciliary congestion all these things are happening 360 degrees so it is severe infective keratitis case now when these patients come to us uh, we usually take the start of our examination with visual equity in these patients you can see that they are, it can be almost have movements anterior segment examination and uh, proper measurement of the abscess height of hypopion involvement of the cornea and uh, all these things are done over there then central corneal thinning is documented but as we know that the anterior segment and the posterior segment there is a protective barrier that is zinnules ciliary zinnules and they play a great role in prevention of the uh, involvement of the posterior segment so usually these uh, infections remain anteriorly but they have a potential to when they cross the all limits they can involve the posterior segment and the patient can develop endophthalmitis so whenever these patients come to us we start with the scraping gram staining gender staining all types of the culture and sensitivity after doing this scraping uh, we can uh, start these patients on fortified antibiotic eye drops like vancomycin and ceftriaxime is a very good combination until we get the culture and sensitivity report cycloplegics should be added they have a role because the eye is inflamed they break the ciliary spasm and uh, they stabilize the blood aqueous barrier pain is relieved so cycloplegics should be used nsaids oral to control inflammation very important and along with this, this when the patient is uh, severe according to the jones classification then we can also go for the oral antibiotics and when we talk about oral antibiotics moxifloxacin along with 400 mg daily along with uh, doxycycline 100 mg 12 hourly is also a very good choice to control inflammation so this way we go topically and orally antibiotics to control the inflammation and control the infection every one hourly these alternatively eye drops should be used and uh, if you kindly have a look at this uh, oct anterior segment it is also very much beneficial uh, you can see here that the stroma is showing very hyper reflective over there and this is a marker this is a indication that infection is going throughout the stroma another oct anterior segment photograph here you can see the hyper reflective stroma showing us all types of the activity infection going on over there and because in spite of full treatment when the patient develops uh, these types of infection there is corneal melting over there and uh, breakdown of the keratocytes necrosis going on over there so you can see how much the corneal thickness has decreased over there it is less than 200 micrometers now and these patients you can see later on in the slides the how it developed perforation i showed you that in spite of given full topical medication and uh, oral medication everything done over there these patients uh, can sometimes develop perforation over there so how to manage the perforation it depends upon the size of the perforation over there if it is small one perforation over there uh, it can be closed with the cyanoacrylate glue as applied in this patient and above it the uh, bandage contact lens is applied the treatment is continued continued there is no break as i mentioned vancomycin ceftriaxime eye drops and uh, oral medication and uh, later on as uh, the report comes after 48 and 72 hours 
the culture and sensitivity report this medication can be adjusted you can see once the treatment is started aggressive treatment now the glue has been applied over there and the bandage contact lens so that infection is now settling down and getting controlled over there regularly b scans uh, are done initially to before perforation uh, to rule out any vitreous involvement yes but once the perforation happens glue applied if it has to be done that one uh, the b scan it should be done very gently number two thing is as i mentioned when we are dealing with such types of infection we use aggressive one hour alternate topical eye drops uh, oral medication along with it we can also give intracameral uh, antibiotics and cefuroxime uh, is a very good option which can also be utilized so this patient now is showing you a very good signs of recovery improving although there is severe congestion but hypopian size is decreasing and you can see that in, in the earlier slide i as men showed the donut shaped uh, corneal abscess it is now fading out types of infections can happen by bacteria viruses fungi acanthamoeba all types of microorganisms can cause it but 80% of the times uh, this is staph staphylococcus infections and whenever there is a breach in epithelium they penetrate they are usually present in the eyelids they penetrate and start causing all these things but there are some bacteria some microorganisms as i mentioned for example neisseria corneal bacterium and uh, they can penetrate the intact corneal epithelium also about the pathophysiology or pathology of these types uh, uh, as i mentioned these are normally present in tear films the micro this is staph helicobacter bacteria but it depends what or which which uh, thing is causing the damage if it is because for example vegetation they are very much prone to and wood injuries to the fungal infections and um, any trauma metallic thing over there in eye not taken proper care of that can cause these damages uh, swimming pools not properly cleaned and uh, also the contact lens nowadays so many people are using contact lenses which is a very effective way to control our refractive error to get rid of the glasses people use it even for cosmetic purpose but i believe their proper cleaning and hygiene is extremely important because once they are not properly cleaned over there uh, they can uh, be a source of infection yes so it depends uh, if there is a virulent organism it can cause damage in 24 hours destruction over there as i showed you and above all if proper care is not taken of then there is the destruction going on over there so this patient i showed you was taken good care of in spite of presenting very late and uh, and it developed perforation also but now the infection is settling down and uh, things are getting controlled but uh, he will need uh, this uh, cyanocrylate glue until the healing process continues over there and contact lens will be over there and he will be under the cover of antibiotic eye drops and it will take some time for him to develop proper healing it was a very interesting case which i wanted to share with my respected audience that even in advanced microbial keratitis and uh, with perforations patient can be managed uh, provided proper care is taken or care of less than 2 mm uh, perforations can be dealt with uh, cyanoacrylate glue but if it is more than that and the cornea has sloughed off then you have to go for the penetrating keratoplasties so i hope my this uh, presentation will be beneficial for my respected audience in their clinical practice i want to thank you for your attendance and attention thank you